بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فهل أسيتم إن توليتم أن تفسدوا في الأرض وتقتعوا أرحامكم أولئك الذين لعنهم الله فأصمهم my and in praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for once enable for once again enabling us with this unique and wonderful opportunity to come together in his house for the sole purposes of worshiping glorifying praising him and ultimately to send salutations upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we pray that Allah azza wa jal will continue to facilitate such kinds of opportunities for us in the future i think this was connected to the, to the phone have a look is the connect Um, last week we spoke about the kindness uh, that we must show, what Islam encourages us to show towards our relatives um, and how important that kindness uh, is or showing that kindness is. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal states in the Quran in the verse that I quoted before you last week, وَآتِ ذَا الْقُرْبَ حَقَّهُ وَالْمِسْكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ وَلَا تُبَذِّرْ تَبْذِيرًا And give the relative his right, give the relative his haqq and also to the poor and to the traveler and do not spend wastefully um, we spoke about how these virtues and they are virtues um, are universally attained um, they're not only as muslims every successful society or community is built upon upon values um, of of, uh, uh, of of family values and social values so it's not just about religion or religiosity, it's a, it's a universal human thing. And we live in a day and age where there's a lot more individualism. Individualism is highlighted. Individualism is promoted. And, you know, look out for yourself. Think about yourself. You always take care of number one. You know, always look out for you, then focus on somebody else. You know, you, do you forget what anybody else is doing. So those kind of values, what happens over time, certain uh, family values and 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 the uh, the honor and the respect and the kindness that we had the relationships that we had they become eroded over time um, to such an extent that they, they become almost non-existent the extended family no longer exists um, you know you're, it's only the immediate family now uh, your you know event in fact your brothers and sisters are no longer your immediate family your immediate family then becomes your own you your wife and your children that's you know that's how uh, to what extent um, we are in um, now uh, the in, in, in imam bukhari's al adab al mufrad we left with the uh, last week with the uh, uh, final hadith um, where we 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 spoke about how um, uh, kinship as, as an individual spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu and uh, uh, you know asked uh, um, and sought refuge uh, in Allah from being severed from being cut off and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said to kinship that do not worry that whoever cuts off from you whoever severs its their ties with you then I will sever and disconnect from that individual um, and, 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 and from there we will uh, now, now talk about the excellence of maintaining those ties of kinship. Why is it so important? Why should we take care of our relatives? Why are our relatives so important? Babu Fadli Silatil Rahim. In the chapter of the excellence of maintaining the ties of kinship, in Imam Bukhari's Al Adab Al Mufrad, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Imam Abu uh, Sayyidina Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala, and he reports. That um, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said, "Ya Rasulullah, uh, I have relatives with whom I maintain ties while they cut me off, and this is important because this refers to us as well. He maintains ties with them, but they have cut off all ties with him. I am good to them whilst they are bad to me. They behave 
foolishly towards me while I am forbearing and I am kind towards them. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if things are as you describe, if that's the way things are, then it's as if you're making them eat burning ashes by being good to them and they in turn are being rude and disrespectful and foolhardy towards you. And then you will continue to have the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and your support against them as long as you maintain your attitude towards them. So as long as you continue to be good towards them, you'll have the support, the assess, the divine help and the divine assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you decide to do like for like, and that's where we as human beings go wrong. Our you know, uh, notions of uh, revenge, um, uh, you know, I'm going to treat that person the way that individual treats me. This is a modern phenomenon. You know, it, it applies to both acts of revenge and acts of generosity. That methodology, I'll give you an example. Uh, an individual buys you, you know, an ex uh, um, a, a birthday present which is worth about, you know, 50 pounds, for example. And then that individual's birthday comes around and you're not thinking about buying them a gift because it's their birthday, just out of the you know, generosity of your heart, because you care for them and you feel like there's something that you, know, you can get for them. And, and exchanging gifts increases love. The, the Prophet ﷺ told us this. But you're only thinking about, oh, well, you know, he gave me, you know, um, a virus gave me, you know, a gift and it was worth 50 pounds at the time. So I have to make sure now that when it's his birthday, I'm going to buy him a gift which is worth at least 50 pounds also, right? That, that mentality, that's what erodes the, the, the relationship between the people because we're doing like for like. So-and-so done this good, this much good towards me, I'm going to do that much good towards them. I have to do a, at least the same and definitely not more. You know? he, he bought me a 50 pound gift. I'm not, not gonna buy him a 100 pound gift. Why, why should I buy him a hundred pound gift? He paid 50 pound for his one. No. And exactly, in, in exactly the same way, acts of revenge. If someone does bad towards you and is evil towards you, we think we've got, the, the, we've got all of the right now, all the right that we need to, to exact our revenge on them or treat them in exactly the same way that you are being treated. No. The Prophet ﷺ has told us. You continue to still maintain good times. You to continue to do your due diligence. Allah is not going to question you about how they treated you. That's their questioning. They're going to be questioned for that. Allah is going to question you about your response to, to, to their behavior towards you. Um, and, and uh, you know, uh, one of the most difficult things to do is to show kindness to someone who continues to uh, be ungrateful and rebuffs you, you know, stays away from you and doesn't want to see any of your kindness, doesn't want to experience any of your kindness. That's one of the most difficult things to do because it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of uh, bravery to do something like that because you will be questioned by, by your society and by community saying, why do you continue to show this person um, uh, or give him the time of day when he has absolutely no care uh, or consideration for you. And, and you'll be discouraged by your society and your community from engaging with that individual. But these are the rewards of it. Allah Azawajal states, you want the divine assistance of Allah? So continue to maintain that relationship towards him. Continue to maintain your good behavior towards him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward you accordingly. In another hadith, Allah Azawajal uh, states in a hadith Qudsi, that Rahman, that I am the Rahman, the, the, the most merciful. Rahim, and I have created the womb. And and, and then uh, Allah Azawajal states that who uh, and and it derives a name, it his its name is is uh, 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 taken directly from my own name. So the name of the womb is taken directly from my own name. فَمَنْ وَصَلَهَا وَصَلْتُهُ وَمَنْ قَطَعَهَا بَتَتُّهُ And whoever connects with it, whoever uh, uh, maintains its connection or its ties with the womb, that I will maintain ties with that individual. And whoever cuts off ties with the womb, with it, 
then I will cut off my ties from him. This is a famous narration. The Prophet Sallallahu repeats this on various occasions. Imam Bukhari in his Adab al-Mufrad has mentioned three or four hadith of the same. Ar-Rahimu shujnatun min Allah. That the womb is a derivative from, from Allah. As in the womb derives from the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. It has the same derivative. And whoever joins with it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joins with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connects with him. And whoever disconnects from it, whoever severs its ties from it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cuts off from him. Or Allah azza wa jal severs um, his ties from that individual. So look at the, the word. The word for means what? The, the, the root noun, it means mercy, it means grace, it means compassion. Um, uh, and and, and it's, it's, it's beautiful that from it are derived the two most uh, recognized names and attributes of Allah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, Rahman, the most merciful, Rahim, the most kind. Both Rahman and Rahim have the same derivative. This word, Rahim, mercy, gratefulness, compassion, grace. So, uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the Lord of, of grace and the most uh, merciful, the most kind. And, you know, the, it's, 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 it's therefore, it's imperative that we understand the connection between the womb and, and it being derived from the, the, the most appropriate attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being merciful and being kind. Rahim, the womb. From that you have Arham. Arham are your relatives who are taken, who have, whose ties with you are connected from the ties of the womb. So it, it, it's, uh, it's not difficult to see the connection between that and the connection between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, uh, there's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where uh, at the end of the hadith he says, "Laha lis." In terms of cutting off whoever severs his ties from the womb, um, Allah severs his ties with that individual. Laha lisanun talqun zalqun yom al qiyamah. Because if you cut off ties from the womb, as in you cut off ties with your um, relatives, your uncles, your aunties. Um, uh, your brothers and sisters, for example, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal states that on Yom Al Qiyama, uh, kinship will will come as an individual, will appear as an individual, and Allah Azza wa Jal states that laha lisanun talqun dalqun Yom Al Qiyama, that it will have a unfettered, eloquent, beautiful, uh, uh, majestic tongue. On the, on the day of judgment. As in what it will say, Allah Azza wa Jal will accept. As in, if you sever your ties with kinship, kinship will complain about you on Yom Al Qiyamah. And its complaint is going to be readily accepted because of its eloquence, because of the eloquence of its tongue. Allah Azza wa Jal, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us. So it's important that we understand, uh, uh, you know, the, the dangers of cutting off uh, uh, ties with our relatives because if we cut off ties from them what essentially we're doing is we're cutting off our ties with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's something that we never want to do um, because we always want to, want to stay in, in communication in connection with him Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik in terms of the and now just to talk about some of the increased rewards because I, I did mention at the beginning that it's important that we we understand why we do what we do. There's a societal reward of it. Um, when you, uh, a, soci a society that is built upon family values and, and, and where people take care of, of their relatives and their loved ones and people who are connected to them, uh, you know, uh, it results in a more of a harmonious society because everyone will essentially be looking out for one another. No one will, will feel alone or out of place because they will have relatives, uh, family members who are there for them 
to, to, to take care of them and to protect them if need be. You see, when we have to give our zakat, who do we give our zakat to? When we give our sadaqah, who do we give our sadaqah to? Who, who are the ones who are deserving of it the most? Who? Our family members, our relatives. So we're duty bound to take care of them and offer a duty of protection towards them more so than anybody else. So ultimately, it, it, it results in a more harmonious uh, society, a better society, a better community where people are constantly looking out for each other. This is a utopia now um, because these, that type of society, I don't believe it no longer, um, no longer exists. But there are other rewards as well, subhanAllah. And listen, to some of them you'll be surprised by. Um, of course, there's a reward with Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, but there's reward on this dunya. Whilst you're living here, you will experience the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for showing kindness towards your relatives. The Prophet sallallahu in a hadith reported by Sayyid Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an, he said, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, man ahabba an yubsata lahu fi rizqi. Uh, whoever, if anyone wants to have his risk, his provision um, extended or, or basit, um, uh, uh, it means to be expanded. Um, and whoever wants his, his, his lifetime, his athar to be extended, to be increased, falyasil rahima then that individual should maintain the ties of kinship. If you maintain the ties of kinship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expand your risk, provide you with wealth, which is essentially the desire of everyone. There's nobody who wants to remain poor. Everybody wants to have wealth. Everybody wants to have um, a certain standard of risk. If you want the expansion of your risk and you want your life to be extended, Everyone wants the fountain of youth. People want to live longer. Allah is telling us. The Prophet ﷺ is telling us in this hadith that if you want that to be extended, then take care of your relatives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will extend your life for you. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, he says that whoever has the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart and maintains the ties of kinship, his life term is going to be prolonged. His wealth is going to be abundant. Uh, and his family uh, ahlu, and his family will love him his 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 relatives will love him and of course when you're loved you're taken care of and you're protected um uh, then there's the the chapter of the uh, of uh, of severing the dangers and the punishment for severing the ties of kinship aside from the fact that allah Zawajal severs his ties with him um uh, uh, I'm going to mention just one simple narration which Imam Bukhari mentions in his chapter. He says, La, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, La yadkhulul jannata qati'ur rahim. Simple. The, the qati'ur rahim, the one who severs the ties of kinship, is not going to enter jannah. Simple. That's it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa didn't need to say more. It's that serious. That you're, you're, you can do all of your good deeds. You can have your prayers and your 15 hajj that you've been to uh, and your you know um, hundreds of thousands of pounds that you've given in zakat and sadaqah right you can be a pillar of your community you can be respected and loved by everybody in your community but if you don't talk to your brother or your sister and you don't maintain any ties with the with, with family members or you've cut off from a member of your family thereby severing um, one of the ties of kinship then essentially you, you know, all of your a'mal have gone to waste. That's how serious it is. And this is why it's important for us to realize that the severity of, of this crime, and it is indeed a crime. It's a crime. And I'm going to stop with uh, the last uh, uh, hadith. The chapter, look at the beauty of this, what this chapter is called. It's called, Babu ta'allamu min ansabikum ma tasiluna bihi arhamakum. That the, the chapter of uh, uh, learning your lineages so that you can maintain the ties of kinship. There's a chapter Imam Bukhari has. So learning your lineage so that you know and you can maintain so you don't fall into that category who can uh, you know, uh, uh, unknowingly sever the ties of kinship because you didn't know who that you didn't realize that this individual was, was your kin. 
learning about them so you can connect to them therefore allah azza wa jal can connect to you um jubair ibn mut'im he 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 states that he heard uh amr ibn khattab radiyallahu ta'ala an yaqul ala al minbar sayyidina amr ibn khattab was sitting on the member and he says ta'allamu ansabakum learn your lineages learn about learn essentially your history know about where you've come from know about who you live with know about your your aunts and your uncles and 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 your grandparents and and who they are and where they came from um thumma silu arhamakum then only then can you connect with those and maintain those ties of kinship because if you don't know the ties of kinship if you don't know who your uncles are and your aunts are you've never met them how are you possibly ever going to maintain those ties with them how are you ever possibly going to earn uh, you know the the, the connection uh, the the sila of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're not going to be able to do that and and now i ask you this question and people who are watching and listening online also ask yourselves how many of your children know the names of their uncles and their aunts forget about their grandparents if they have passed away right and their you know your aunts and uncles who are essentially their great aunts and uncles how many of your 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 children know the names of them i i, I it's 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 uncommon people you know whereas i remember I, I i remember going growing up in a household where it was not only was it encouraged it was an obligation that you have to know every time a, a family member came this is you know who this is this is this person make sure you remember the name who was related to this person that's how they related to you so that connection you understand and our parents had every right to teach us that it was their duty to teach us that because you know once your parents are gone then who's going to maintain those ties who's going to look after those people who's going to know about them if you don't i know i, I know uh, people who are here and they have uncles and aunts who are here in the uk and therefore relatives cousins here in the uk and they know them well they understand them they know who their names are they know who they are you know how they're connected to them but they have then relatives back home who they have absolutely no idea never met them you know uh, don't even know their names don't even know their names you know you 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 have your first cousin there i have a first cousin i don't know they have brothers and sisters you have first mom no idea i don't know how many children there are i don't know who they are i don't know as if you know um uh, it's it's not their duty or their obligation to know about them just because they're further away you know that's ridiculous you know in in terms of their relationship they are qareeb they're close to you distance they may be baid they be they may be far away but all the more reason for you to find ways to connect to them to know about them to learn about them know about your history know about your grandparents and what what they went through and how they struggled you know um it's amazing what you will learn from your history it's amazing what you will learn about yourselves yourself from that history so that's this is important learn about your lineages so that you can maintain the ties of kinship because by allah he he states that um if uh bayna rajul wa bayna akhihi shay um if there is something between uh, a man and, and and somebody else i mean a, a man and his brother as in if there is a uh, uh, you know something that draws them or is drawing them apart or taking them apart taking them away from one another he knows that there is kinship there is uh uh family ties with that individual that's going to prevent him from breaking up with him for good it's true isn't it that if you even if there's a disagreement that you have you know that your kin your family and family is going to come together brothers are going to argue brothers and sisters sisters with each other in fact they argue more so than others you're going to argue with them more than you argue with 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 others you know you is you argue with your loved ones more you disagree with your loved ones more so than others that's fine but it's the fact that your brothers and sisters which is going to make you reconcile easier and quicker that's how it should be unfortunately not the way that it happens um, we pray that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, give us all the understanding 
of of uh, of this beautiful relationship and and make us honor the uh, uh, the uh, the ties of of this kinship of the womb and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those who enter jannah as a result whose wealth is basid is expanded and whose lifetime is it a prolonged or extended uh, ameen wa akhir ta'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin if you can recite with me um, dua allahumma anfa'na bima 'allamtana wa'allimna ma yanfa'una wazidna 'ilma walhamdulillahi ala kulli hal amin barahmatika